video, I'm gonna walk through two different research GPT bots that were made by one, SciSpace, and the other one was made by Consensus. So I will have links to both of these bots. They are, you do have to have a ChatGPT Plus account, but then you can just go to these bots once you have that account. You don't have to have the SciSpace or Consensus, Consensus accounts as well. So I will have links to both of these bots and links to both of the um, websites that made these bots, so SciSpace and Consensus. But ultimately, I wanna be able to show you, you can see that it says here, basically it's your AI research assistant. You can see instantly access 200 million papers. And so you can see that it says 200 million on both. And that is because I believe, and I don't know this for certain, but I believe both of these are using the Semantic Scholar API to pull data from. So using one of these is going to be a far better um, experience, far more accurate than using just regular ChatGPT because these bots specifically go use the API to pull real research articles in from Semantic so Scholar into ChatGPT for it to then give your give answers instead of just letting ChatGPT use whatever sources that it wants to use. So I'm going to ask both of these the same questions and then we can analyze their responses and see which one might you find is a better fit for you or you could use both of them. So for each of them, I'm gonna ask it, how are steroids separated using ion mobility spectrometry. I'm going to be broad for each of these and I'm just going to copy paste so that we know both of them are, are accurate to each other. Um, you can also see that you can upload files here. Whenever you have the plus version, you can upload files. These are both more meant to actually be made to go and search for their own, but if you want to add knowledge, you can't. So I'm going to send both of these. And so you can see this one says talking to, I need to allow it. I think I've already allowed it for SciSpace, but you will get that allow either time. And so what this is doing is this is talking to research GPT at typeset, and this is talking to chat at consensus. So these are their endpoints for, um, um, how they get data to ChatGPT. Okay, so these both just finished. What I will say here is you can see that it looks like it started here and then it kind of restarted here. I think this was aired out because I was running both of these at the same time. I think this is a ChatGPT error, not a consensus error. So I'm just gonna evaluate from this point on um, and compare it directly here. So with size spaces, it says steroids are separated using ion mobility spectrometry by exploiting their unique gas phase ion behavior. That's how you would separate anything in ion mobility spectrometry. IMS separates ions based on differences in their mobility through a gas under the influence of an electric field. That's correct. This process is often enhanced by techniques such as derivatization, liquid chromatography, and mass spectrometry. Ma liquid chromatography and mass spectrometry are things that happen on the like front end and back end of ion mobility, not necessarily within the ion mobility cell, but it can be enhanced. Um, these methods improve the resolution and structural characterization of steroids, aiding in the separation of isomeric compounds. Yeah, that's that's true. So what you will see here is this gives you a table. Um, with the paper title, this is linkable. So if I open it in, new, in a new tab, it's going to go to the SciSpaces page for that article is what it's doing there. So these are all linkable. And then it says um, for more detailed information, visit this. So it's already created the search result for you. So if you um, open this in a new tab, you can see it's just search steroids here. So it's not going to give you the exact search results that you're looking for. Um, and I think that's because it generated the query with a space in it. Um, where it should have generated that query with the uh, a plus instead. So that's a little kind of bug in the way this is working. And then you can always ask for more questions. So let's look at the actual papers it gave us. It gave us five different papers. This is a comprehensive steroid assay, improved eye mobility and structural characteristics of steroids using derivatization. Um, uncovering the behavior of ions to predict eye mobility separation targeted glucocorticoid analysis. So glucocorticoids are a type of steroids and the multidimensional separations of intact phase two steroid metabolites using LC eye mobility um, HRMS. So this is more similar to like the table it would give you here with its insights. So it's basically giving you these two tabs within ChatGPT. 
And then it gives you the insights. So this demonstrates the use of liquid chromatography with eye mobility, highlights improvements in eye mobility separation and structural characterization. So this kind of just feels like a rephrasing of the title here. Focuses on understanding, that's exactly what it is. It's just rephrasing the title as a key insight. Discusses targeted analysis of glucocorticoids using ion mobility and describes, yeah, this is literally just using the exact same words um, that are in the paper. So I don't know how much that, that insight really helps you because you could basically get that insight from the paper title there. So if we move over to consensuses, um, we see that steroids can be effectively separated using eye mobility, a technique that has shown promise in various studies. So we get five different, so it's still five um, differences between these, and it looks like each one has an article, and it looks like if you look at below, this will take you um, to Consensus's website for that article. So derivatization of steroids um, enhances their separation. For example, derivative derivatizing with p-toluene sulfonyl isocyanate. That is actually what this paper does look at, um, so that is correct. Metal adduction and multimerization. So you can see this is my paper here, the formation of multimer steroid metal adducts using traveling wave eye mobility spectrometry can separate steroid isomers. This method shows the ability to se separate with a decreased resolution for mixtures. So is this the right, I'm curious, is this the right, yeah. So this is the paper that looked at it in mixtures. Um, group one metal adduction, this is the paper that came before that one. So applying group one metal adduction to steroids has been successful or effective. This method has led to the successful separation of steroids as dimeric addicts with group one. So if it wasn't separating out by paper, I would think it would include these two. This should come in front of this one. Ion mobility, mass spectrometry separation, that's a little broad in the title, but I want to read its description. So IMS, IMMS has been evaluated for its capabilities in rapid separation of endogenous isomeric steroids. This method allows for the separation of steroids based on their structural difference, such as ring conformation and the chirality of hydroxyl groups, which affect collision cross-section values. So yeah, so that's giving a lot more information into what they're actually doing, um, specifically talking about the structural difference, which is what this paper discussed. And then a comprehensive steroid assay looks at LCIMS-MS has been established for separating steroids based on retention time, mass to charge, and drift time. So that's, yeah, that makes sense. This method has been highly sensitive and selective for compounds. This is a little general to me, um, but it, it is giving us an understanding of what this paper does talk about. So in conclusion, eye mobility spectrometry, particularly with combined with techniques like TWIMS, derivatization, and metal adduction, offers effective means for the separation of steroids, enhancing the resolution um, and identification accuracy. So I know these four papers, for sure, they exist. All these papers exist. So this is getting rid of that hallucination effect because it is using that API to call up real papers and forcing ChatGPT to look at those databases for its answers instead of just generating answers. Now, when I compare between these two, I think this one, I'm just gonna look at some of these dates. So this is March, 2022. This looks like it's pulling more recent data or more recent papers, October, 2022. Yeah, these are all kind of far more recent. Yeah, January, 2022. So this is all within the last couple years where you see this one has the years in it. So it's pulling 2013. That would be a fairly old paper, but it is a fairly pivotal paper for this field. My papers were 2018, 2019. It doesn't have my 2020 paper in here, but that's fine. This one's 2017, and then this one's the earliest, which is 2022. So we're actually seeing that this one, let me just make sure this one doesn't. So this one is the first paper. So we're only seeing the overlap of a single paper between these two chatbots, which I find is really interesting. This is really focused on probably the newer analyses. So this is this one focuses on recency, and I think this one focuses a little bit more on relevancy. So this is where you're starting to get 
right? As, as a field expands, it's you start getting more and more specified studies. The initial field, the initial studies in a field tend to be a bit broader because they're kind of breaking the new ground. But as that new ground gets broken, you start to specify more and more, specifically looking at structural, structural characteristics of steroids, looking specifically at glucocorticoids, looking at a phase two steroid metabolites, right? Like these are all a lot more specific. These are all a lot broader, which I would think this is a better answer to steroids. Generally, this is an answer looking at more recent applications, more recent papers here. So well, I really like these as a kind of um, complementary, at least in the papers it's bringing up. Now, when we're talking about the insight it's giving from those papers, though, I have to say I like consensuses a lot more. I think consensus is actually pulling that insight from the abstracts, whereas SciSpace is just pulling that insight from the paper title, and it just feels like they're rewriting the paper title. This kind of feels very redundant to me, where this is definitely bringing in more information than just what the paper title would have. So I don't know if they included, did they include the derivatization? Yeah, so in this one, they didn't include the derivatization agent in the paper title. So they have to be pulling this from the abstract here. My stuff, you might be able to get from the paper title, but this part right here was in the abstract. It wasn't in the paper title. So I do think consensus's actual insights are going to be a lot better than SciSpace's insights currently. However, I don't know if either of these two websites plan on developing out these chatbots more. If you have specific things you want me to test out between these two chatbots, let me know in a comment below. And if you're working on getting started in your research, check out my 30 day research jumpstart guide. It gives you a research plan for how to get started learning your field and developing out your ideas and creating your research plan. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.